You know, many of you have jobs and you remember going for a job interview. And oftentimes you apply for a job hoping that you'll get the job even though your resume is not very impressive. And you go in for the interview and they start describing to you what this job requires. You have to have knowledge of accounting or management or maybe it's a tech job so you have to know this programming language and that one or this protocol etc etc etc. And they start listing all of these requirements that you know and you're sitting there in the interview going I don't know if they got the wrong resume because the only technical, require, technical skills I put in is Google and now they're telling me I have to know this programming language and that one and that one and this much coding experience and management experience and this, as the guy is telling you all these job descriptions you're sitting there embarrassed like maybe he should just let me go now instead of humiliating me further you know and after he's done describing all of this and you're clearly not qualified he turns to you and says congratulations you start tomorrow now your first reaction is shock how, how did I get picked for this job I, I'm not nearly qualified but the second part of this is, even if I did, did get picked, even if I am selected for this job, it's no congratulations at all. Tomorrow when I show up for work, I'm not going to know what to do. They're going to know that I'm completely and utterly not suitable for this job. It's going to be humiliating. There's no way I'm going to learn any of this. So Allah Azza wa Jal in the beginning of this ayah didn't just say, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ Struggle for, you know, with, with no goal before you and struggle for no other reason than Allah Himself. Make efforts towards Islam. But that wasn't, that wasn't enough. He said, Hakka jihadihi, as is worthy of him. So let's understand that phrase, as is worthy of that struggle or the struggle that is made for him. Think about this. When you and I pray, when we pray, do we pray in the way that Allah deserves? Or when we thank Allah, do we thank Allah to the amount that Allah deserves to be thanked? Or when we obey Allah or remember Allah? Do we remember Allah the way He deserves to be remembered? As a matter of fact, no matter how much we do, we can never qualify to, the, to, the, to do justice to His rights. We're always going to fall short. My salah is never going to be worthy of Allah, actually. At the end of it all, it's going to have lots of errors. It's going to have lots of shortcomings. My mind will wander. You know, and then Allah Azza wa Jal only knows if it's good enough. And so we have to beg Him at the end of our prayer, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ minna, Master, accept from us. Whatever hodgepodge we were able to put together, at least hopefully that's good enough. But there's no way you and I can ever do something that's worthy of Allah Himself. And it's impossible. So how is Allah giving us an impossible job description? وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ Struggle with no intention except Allah alone, like, he deserve, like the struggle is worthy of Him. Doing justice to that struggle. There's no way to do justice to that struggle. That is utterly impossible. But now after I describe that it's utterly impossible, there's one more phrase here before I go on that needs special attention. Allah says, Fillah. Fillah, which is, without getting into a lengthy conversation, essentially suggests that when you make efforts for Islam, when you try to leave, for example, disobedience of Allah, you want to get away from haram, no matter how tempting it is, no matter how strong that pull is. Maybe you're making a lot of money, but it's money from not halal sources. And it's really hard to quit because you have a house to pay for, children's education. There's so many things tied to it. So it's so tempting to hold on. Maybe one of these young men or women are in a relationship and they're tempted. And they're being pulled into that relationship constantly and they can't get out of it. They're, they're struggling to get out of it. And coming back into the obedience of Allah is a very difficult, very difficult struggle for them. Because shaitan is constantly pulling at them, constantly pulling away at them. And even if they get away momentarily, the struggle comes back again. You know, it is, it is important to note when these kinds of struggles happen, that the pressure your family will put on you, or some, somebody will come and try to give you a reminder, don't do this. Or somebody else will try to say, hey, my, I'm your friend, I mean well for you, you shouldn't be doing this. When, when we try to put pressure on each other to do the right thing, none of that pressure is going to be good enough. It's not going to be good enough. When a human being is going to fall before the waswasa of shaitan, when a human being is going to stop struggling for Allah, then the only thing that can save them is their relationship with Allah. That's the only thing. You cannot become a better Muslim for your parents. You can't become a better person because of your community. You can't. They can help, but until you decide that you're doing this only and only and only for Allah, that struggle will not last. It's impossible. It has to be sincere. The only way to know that is inside of yourself, inside of myself. Outside of ourselves, we can show to each other what we are, but the reality inside only Allah knows. 
وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ Once he describes that we are utterly unqualified, obviously, because of this impossible job description, he then gives the explanation of why we're, we've been chosen. He says, هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ The easy translation of هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ is in fact, he's the one, he has selected you, he has chosen you. But the Arabic word here for choosing or ijtiba, the, the word that's selected here by Allah is very special. If you say the word ikhtiyar, which is also a word for choice, then it comes from the word khayr, meaning you prefer something or something is, you make a better choice. That's ikhtiyar. You can say istifa, istafa or istifa in the Arabic language, which comes from safwa, purity. When you make a choice, you don't have to explain anybody, to anybody else why you made that choice. For example, when you go shopping, and you buy like a blue shirt, you don't owe somebody a scientific explanation, why did you pick the blue shirt, why didn't you get the white shirt? That's istifa, it's purely your choice. There's no rationale necessary. But when you say ijtiba, which is the word Allah chose here, when He described that He chose you and me to be Muslim, that word actually comes from jabu. Jabu in Arabic, in old Arabic actually get, the, the verb used to be used for tax collection. Back in the day, the people who made enough money owed taxes. Obviously, even now, you have to be above a certain level minimum income before you're qualified to be, to, to be selected for tax collection. Ijtiba actually means to make a choice based on qualifications. So in other words, you know when you get hired for a job, or if you're fixing your car, or you're, you're, you're tightening a screw or something, and you pick the right tool for that job, you just did ijtiba. Because if you pick any other tool, it doesn't do the job. When you make the right choice for the right job, that is called ijtiba. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you and what I'm trying to remind myself of is that when Allah honored you and me to be Muslim, the fact that you and I say La ilaha illallah, the fact that you and I have, have the gift of saying Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is actually a very precise choice from Allah of you and me. There were plenty of other human beings available before Allah on this planet and Allah chose precisely you and me to be Muslim for a task that he has. Because ijtiba is done for a particular purpose, for a task. So now, you are, we aren't just chosen to be Muslim, we're chosen to be Muslim because we have a mission in front of us. And that mission he already describes is you have to struggle for Allah as is worthy of the struggle that should be made for him. هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا And then he, then he adds finally, now that I realize I've been chosen, even though I've been chosen, I, I'm still thinking this is too hard of a job. How am I going to do this? Fine. Allah sees something in me, I don't even see it in myself. I don't even see what's so special about me. Why did I get chosen? You know, there's so many better people out there. But Allah is, and this is too hard anyway. Islam is way too hard. What Allah is asking of me is too much. I can't do it. And what are the next words from Allah Himself? وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حرج. He did not place for you in the religion any difficulty, any discomfort, any tightness whatsoever. In other words, this is Allah Himself telling you, relax, I'll make it easy. Don't you worry about that. You are the right man for the job. You're the right woman for the job. You were the one chosen for this time, this day, and this age. You know, when you look around now, you see that Muslims are, we're, we're, we're the target of media attention, political craziness. I, I travel to England all the time. But this last time I traveled, I got exhaustively questioned. What are you doing here? You know, <laughs> I got a question like, why are you here? That's never happened before. So Muslim, things are becoming tougher and tougher for Muslims. They are in many, many ways, but that's okay. You know what? Allah chose you and me to be born in this generation, in this day and age, knowing full well these are the trials we're going to have. And the best people qualified to struggle in these trials are the Muslims alive today. That's the choice of Allah. That's why, he, that's why you and I are taking a breath right now. If we didn't have a purpose for us, because He only creates for purpose. خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ He created the skies and the earth with precise purpose and molded you. So He molded you and me and put us in this position because we have a purpose to serve. And then even though that's a challenging purpose, Allah Himself gives the orientation and says, I'm not going to make it any hard for you. It's not going to be difficult at all. I'll take you back to the analogy I gave you in the beginning. There's that job interview and the guy gave you an impossible job description and you're sitting there thinking there's no way I'll get hired and then he hires you. 
And your first thought is, I'm not qualified. And he says, relax, I know what I'm doing. I've been hiring for a long time. I see something in you. Even if you don't think you know, you'll learn pretty quickly. You know, I, I know talent when I see it. So he's encouraging you and he's acknowledging you in a way that you didn't even think you saw in yourself. The other thing that's happening here is every Muslim is supposed to see value in themselves. No believer can think that they're useless before Allah. 